In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make this 3D model of a bucket. The Blender version that I'm using is 4.1. During the video, I'll be using a Blender add-on called Blender Kit. If you've never used it, then you may want to watch another video that I made which will show you how to install and use it. I'll put a link to it in the video description. I want to mention that in this video, I'll provide specific distance and scale values to help you follow along. Feel free to use alternative values if you prefer. Let's start by using the cube to make a plank that will be used for the main body of the bucket. So tab into edit mode and press A to select all. Then scale on the X axis by pressing S, then X, then .04, then enter. Then scale on the Y axis by pressing S, then Y, then .1, then enter. Then scale on the Z axis by pressing S, then Z, then 1.7, then enter. Now tab into object mode. We're going to be setting up the material for this, so let's first set up an environment where we can get a good look at how the material will look. So press Z and select rendered view. Then set the render engine to cycles. If you have a supported GPU, you can select it here to speed up rendering. Now select the light source and set the power to 5000 and set the radius to 3. Then press 3 on the number pad for side view. Then duplicate the light source by pressing Shift D and drag it down here. Now we'll add a material to the cube using Blender Kit. So select the cube, then press N to open the sidebar and click the Blender Kit tab. To use Blender Kit, start by selecting materials. Then in the search box type Old Wood Planks. This is the one that I'm going to use, and so I just click it. Now I'll close the selection display to free up space. Next we'll make some adjustment to this material. So switch to the shading workspace. Then press Z and select Rendered View. If you look at the orange outline of the cube, you'll notice that the material makes the object appear quite a bit larger than it actually is. To correct this, in the bottom window find the Displacement node and change the scale value to 0 0.005. Next we'll change the direction of the material. So find the mapping node and change the Z rotation value to 0. We'll also change the size of the material. So change all three vector values to 2. You'll notice now that the direction of the edges on the top are not aligned in the same direction as the front. To change this, switch to the UV Editing Workspace. I'll switch to Rendered View. In the left window, select the center vertices which represent the top and bottom of the object. Then rotate by pressing R, then 90, then Enter. Now the direction of the edges on the top are aligned with the front. We can switch back to the Layout Workspace now. Next, add a Bevel Modifier. Set the amount to 0 0.005 and set the number of segments to 3. Now add a screw modifier. Make sure the axis is set to Z. To make this look like a bucket, we need to make some changes in edit mode. So tab into edit mode. Then move it on the X axis by pressing G, then X, then 1.7, then Enter. Then rotate by pressing R, then Y, then 5, then Enter. If I switch to Solid View, you can see that the screw modifier gave us a bunch of edges instead of a smooth surface. This is actually beneficial for us since it gives the bucket an old rustic look. Next we're going to make the bottom of the bucket. So tab into Object Mode, press Shift A and add a mesh cylinder. Then turn on X-Ray so that we can better see what we're doing. Now tab into Edit Mode and press 3 on the number pad for Side View. Then select the bottom vertices. Then move them on the Z axis by pressing G, then Z, then drag them near the bottom of the bucket. Then press S to scale and scale it until it more than fills the inside of the bucket. This edge is the inside of the bucket. Now select the top vertices. 
Move them on the Z axis by pressing G, then Z, then drag them down to form the thickness of the bucket bottom. Then press S to scale and scale it until it more than fills the inside of the bucket. Now tab into object mode. I'll press Z and switch to rendered view. For the material, click here and select the old wood planks material. Now let's make some metal rings to go around the outside of the bucket. So press Shift A and add a mesh circle. Then press 3 on the number pad for side view. I'll switch to solid view for this. Now tab into edit mode. The rings will wrap around the outside of the bucket. So press S and scale to the outside surface. Then extrude on the Z axis by pressing E, then Z, then minus 0.25, then enter. Then press S and scale it to the outside of the bucket. Next we'll add some thickness to it, so press A to select all. Then press E and then right click. What we've just done is to extrude by a distance of zero. This gave us another set of connected vertices. Now we'll scale these new vertices on the X and Y axis but not the Z axis. So press S, then Shift Z, then 1.02, then Enter. Now tab into object mode and switch to rendered view. Next we'll add a material to it. So in the Blender Kit search box type metal plates old. I'm going to select this one with the rivets. I'll close the selection display to free up space. We're going to resize the material so switch to the shading workspace. Find the mapping node and change all three scale values to 0.2. To center a row of rivets, move the material by changing the Y location value to 0.4. Now switch back to the layout workspace. Next, add a bevel modifier. Set the amount to 0.01 and the number of segments to 2. Then right click and select Shade Smooth. Now we're going to duplicate and resize this metal ring, so switch to Solid View, then press 3 on the number pad for Side View. To duplicate and move it on the Z axis, press Shift D, then Z, then drag it near the bottom. Then scale on the X and Y axis, but not the Z axis. So press S, then Shift Z, then scale it to fit the outside of the bucket. Then duplicate it again and move it on the Z axis by pressing Shift D, then Z, then drag it near the top. Then like before, scale it by pressing S, then Shift Z, then scale it to fit the outside of the bucket. Now I'll switch to Rendered View. Next let's make some handle connectors. So switch to Solid View. Then press 7 on the number pad for Top View. Then press Shift A and add a mesh torus. Open the last operation panel and set the major radius to 0.12. Set the minor radius to 0.02. Then tab into edit mode. Select the top vertices above the center but not including the center. Then press X and delete the selected vertices. Now select the top vertices. Then extrude by pressing E, then Y, then 0.1, then enter. Then tab into object mode. I'll switch to rendered view now. For the material, click this button and select the metal plate's old material. Then right click and select Shade Smooth. Next we'll move this into position. So switch to solid view. Then press 3 on the number pad for side view. Then rotate by pressing R. Then X. Then minus 90. Then enter. Then press G and move it into place at the top of the bucket edge. It should be slightly inside the top of the bucket. 
then duplicate it and move it on the Y axis by pressing Shift D, then Y, then move it into position. Next, switch to rendered view to see how it looks. I'm going to move it a little on the Y axis. I'll do the same with the other one. Now let's make the handle. So press Shift A and add a curve path. Currently the path doesn't have any geometry. So let's add the geometry before we shape it. So in the Data tab, open the Geometry section and set the bevel depth to 0.02 and the resolution to 2. This will give it a round shape. Then enable fill caps to fill in the end. Next, press 1 on the number pad for front view. Then move it to the top of the bucket by pressing G, then Z, then move it to the top. Now press 7 on the number pad for top view. Then rotate it by pressing R, then 90, then enter. Now we're ready to shape the handle. So tab into edit mode. This path has five nodes. We shape the handle by moving the nodes. We'll start with the center node, so click it to select it. Then move it by pressing G, then X, then minus 8, then enter. You'll notice that even though we moved the node all the way over here, the handle itself only moved to here. By the way, after we finish shaping the ends of the handle, this middle part will end up closer to the bucket. Now we'll make a sharp bend at the end of the handle. So select the end node. Every time we move a node, we want to move it on the X and Y axis, but not the Z axis. So we'll be pressing Shift Z after pressing G to restrict the movement. So press G, then Shift Z, and move it to the left side of the connector. Then select this node, press G, then Shift Z, then move it until the handle passes through the connector. Now we'll do the other side. So select this node and move it to the left. Then select this node and move it until it passes through the connector. Since this is a sharp bend, you'll notice that the bend is not smooth. To improve this, set the resolution and render values to 32. Now tab into object mode. To set the material, click this button and select the metal plate's old material. Then right click it and select Shade Smooth. Here are a few renders of this bucket that I did from different angles. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.